The Masked World by Jack Williamson Read for you by Elaine Frank The planet wore a mask. At 10 million miles, it was a sullen yellow eye. At 1 million, a scarred and evil leer. Outside the smoking circle our landing jets had sterilized, it was a hideous veil of hairy black tentacles and huge sallow blooms, hiding the riddle of its sinister genes. On most worlds that our astronauts have found, the life is vaguely like our own. Similar nucleotides are linked along similar helical chains of DNA, carrying similar genetic messages. A similar process replicates the chains when the cells divide, to carry the complex blueprints for a particular root or eye or wing accurately down across 10,000 generations. But even the genes were different here, enormously complicated. Here, the simplest seeming weed had more and longer chains of DNA than anything we had seen before. What was their message? We had come to read it with our new genetic microprobe. A hundred precious tons of microscopic electronic gear, it was designed to observe and manipulate the tiniest units of life. It could reach even those strange genes. That was our mission. Ours was the seventh ship to approach the planet. Six before us had been lost without trace. We were here to find out why. Our pilot was Lance Landark, a lean, hard man, silent and cold as the gray-cased microprobe. We hated him, until someone learned why he had volunteered to come. His wife had been pilot of the ship before us. When we knew that... We began to hear the hidden tension in his tired voice, monotonously calling on every band. Come in, Six. Come in, Six. Six never came in. For two days, we watched the planet, the shallow ditch our jets had dug, the charred stumps, the jungle beyond, the visible mask of those monstrous genes, rank, dark, utterly alien. At the third dawn, Lance Landark took two of us out in a copter. Flying a grid over the landing area, we mapped six shallow pockmarks on that scowling wilderness where our ships must have landed. We dropped into the newest crater, where black stumps jutted like broken teeth out of queerly bare red muck. A yellow scum stream oozed across it. By the stream, we found a fine-boned human skeleton. A nightmare plant stood guard beside the bones. Its thick leaves were strangely streaked, twisted with vegetable agony, half-poisoned spine, and half-blighted bloom. Shapeless blobs of rotting fruit were falling from it over those slender bones. Lance Landark stood up. Her turquoise thunderbird. He showed us the bit of blackened silver and blue-veined stone. Back on Terra, back when we were student pilots, we bought it from an Indian in an old, old town called Santa Fe. He bent again. Lilith, he whispered. Lilith, what killed you? We found no other bones, nothing even to tell us what force or poison kept the creeping jungle back from that solitary plant. We left at dusk. Tenderly, Lance Landark brought the gathered bones. Carefully, we carried a few leaves and dried pods from that crazy sentinel plant. We found no other clue. Patiently, day 
by 40-hour day, we searched the other sites. We found jet marks and stumps and teeming weeds, but nothing like that tormented nightmare over Lilith Landark's skeleton. We found no wreckage, nothing to show how the planet had murdered the lost expeditions. Day by eternal day, the unknown leered from the secret places of its genes. It was all vegetable. We saw no animal movement, heard no cry or insect hum. The silence became suffocating. Day after desperate day, we returned to the microprobe. The answer's in the genes, Lance Landark whispered grimly. We've no other chance. He kept the probe running on the strangest genes of all, those from the plant nightmare that had grown beside his wife. They were like nothing else on the planet. The double-stranded chains of DNA were monstrously long. Many of the nucleotide links held copper or arsenic atoms. Queer, Lance kept muttering. No copper or arsenic in other plants here. I'd like to know why. He was running when we heard the woman scream. In that stifling quiet, her cry unnerved us all. We crowded down to the lock. Tattered, stained with blood-colored juices, she slipped through those coiled, constricting creepers. She splashed out into the open ditch, waving a filthy rag. Halfway to the ship, she fell into the mud. Lance Landark led three of us to bring her in. She whimpered and looked up. Tears streaked the grime on her wasted face. Lance, she gasped. My dear. Lilith. But he shrank back suddenly. I found Lilith dead. I am nearly dead. She tried weakly to get up. You see, we're all marooned out there in the bush. Emergency landing. When we tried to get off, wrecked our astrogation gear. Need your spare astropilot. Back, he swung on us. Back aboard. What's wrong? We were stunned. She's your wife. Aboard, instantly. We obeyed his deadly voice. Help, she whispered faintly behind us in the mud. Survivors need Astro Pilot to plot our way home. The clanging cut off her voice. Angrily, we turned on Lance Landark. Hold it, he snapped. I'm not crazy. The planet is. Come along to the microprobe. I'm probing a seed from the plant we found by Lilith's bones. It puzzled me. So much of it was... In spite of the tension, he had to grope for a word to express meaning. Arbitrary. Those shapeless leaves... Twisted stock, that sterile seed, the copper and arsenic in those needless links. Too many genes had no function, no use at all. I just got the key when that thing screamed. The copper and arsenic atoms are not genetic instructions to the plant. They're a message to us. Words replicated a trillion times and concealed in every cell of the plant. Words, someone whispered blankly. Words in the atoms? Written in binary code. His scowl was bleakly triumphant. That weed's a mutant, you see. The real Lilith formed the first cell with her microprobe. She left it. I suppose, in her own body, as a message that no pseudo-Lilith could intercept. Outside, that something screamed again. Call each copper atom a dot, he whispered. Call each arsenic a dash. 
taken in order along the chains of DNA, they do encode a message. The computer's decoding it now. He punched a button, and the printer whirred. To whoever comes, give no aid to anyone. Get off this planet. Its life is pseudomorphic. Don't let it leave. Just take my love to Lance Landark from Lilith, his wife, and get off this planet fast. Outside, it uttered a frantic, bubbling screech. We did get off the planet, and we expect to stay away. <laughs> <laughs>